Hey, what's up guys? I'm Dan H and welcome to the project. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. In this video, we are gonna do the rear brakes on this Grand Cherokee WJ, the old Green Hornet. Uh, the last video I filmed was in the scorching heat of the hot summer day and uh, I am nice and toasted and sunburned after that one, good gosh. But uh, we are done with that video. We did the front calipers. What we did was we switched over from the crappy Teve style calipers over to the better Akabono style calipers and uh, we did the pads and rotors while we were at it, of course, and uh, we bled the brakes. Now, I'm gonna go to the auto parts store. We're gonna exchange the core charge for those original calipers. We're gonna get some money back. This way I can afford the rear brakes now. Um, can't wait to do this. Uh, gonna do rear brakes. Uh, we're not gonna do the calipers, so we're not gonna have to re-bleed the brakes. We're just gonna do the pads and rotors, but we're also gonna do the parking brake setup. So I got the parking brake hardware, all those gadgets and gizmos, and I also got the parking brake shoes. So we're gonna take care of all of that stuff as soon as we get our money back from the core. Here we go, rolling into the old zone of the auto. Pulling in here, I got my receipt. <laughs> Let's do this. All right, walking out of the store with a box full of car parts. Can't beat that. Thank you, AutoZone. Today we're gonna do the back brakes, so mainly the parking brake, the rotors, and the pads. So let's get started. All right, guys, here we go. This is our Teve style rear caliper. There is no Akabono upgrade for this. So far, it looks like the rotor is pretty good. Pads don't look too shabby. A grinding I heard must be coming from the passenger side, as suspected, but we're gonna dig into this. We're gonna take off these caliper bolts. I gotta pop off this cap. Let me get my tools. First thing I'm gonna do is pop off this cap. I'm gonna take off the caliper bolt with the seven millimeter hex head right there. Same thing goes for the bottom bolt. Pop off the cap. All right, once your screws are backed out, they might need a little poke just to get them out of the way. There we go. I'll just pull them out with the screwdriver. Nice. Then you can go ahead and wedge your screwdriver in to pop off these metal clips. There, now I can put the screwdriver in here, give this a little tug, take off the caliper. There we go. Rest our caliper right up here. We can have a look at our brake pads. Yeah, not terrible, not terrible at all. Let's pop out the back side. <laughs> back side. Again, not terrible, but I wanted new brakes all around. All right, strung up my caliper with a bungee so it's safe and out of the way and not dangling on this soft line. Now we're gonna take off these caliper bracket bolts, one up here, one down here. And just like the front brakes, these brackets are 18 millimeter. Oh yeah. Now they should be on nice and tight. Loosen the bottom. There we go, that one was a little easier. Once they're loose, I'll just roll off by hand. There we go. All right, now that the caliper bracket is out of the way, these rotors, <laughs> these rotors should come right off. You know what? Oh, maybe I'll just whack it all off with a hammer. There we go. Hey, check this out, guys. I wonder why my parking brake wasn't working. This top side is all worn off. There's absolutely nothing left. And the bottom one is almost new. Look at this. And look here, 
We have all this grease. You know what I think is happening here? I think I have leaky axle tube seals and all my diff fluid is dripping out of the seals onto this lower brake pad, causing it to be lubricated. And that's why none of this bottom brake is wearing. All right, so this is kind of hard to see with the axle in place, but we have our star adjuster here. We have spring here. We have a spring up there. And we also have these big clips right here. These clips are holding on these brake shoes. So what I'm going to do now is remove all of this hardware and replace it with a brand new hardware. All right, got my trusty yuck bucket. It's going to catch any debris that falls off. So uh, I could try to preserve some of my driveway. Oh, it'll also catch all that nasty uh, gunk that falls out when I try to clean this sucker out with the old brake fluid. I don't like that curved one, that right angle one. Looks like it's a better option. There we go. Nice little right angle pick to go ahead and take off that spring. Let's see. Spin the little head on this little pin right there. Here comes the spring. All this hardware is actually in pretty good condition. Gross though. Ugh, look at that. Would you look at that? Oh, there goes the adjuster. Okay, if you couldn't see this on the vehicle, this is what the setup looks like. We're going to attempt to replicate this back on the vehicle with all these new pieces of hardware and this Duralast brake kit I got from AutoZone. Let's see, I don't know what that C10 means, but I got H7421, H7306, I don't know, different part numbers, different vehicles, but that's what I got, we're going to use it, also I got these, brake shoes, 807, ooh, shoes. And of course, before we put all that back on, you can see there is a tremendous amount of sludge dripping out from under there. I am sure that is diff fluid caked up with brake dust and road grime. So we're gonna clean that all up with this. Whoa, Pro Series brake parts cleaner. This is a huge ass can. It's like over a pound, one pound, 13 ounces. This is great, almost a two pound can. Um, I'll leave a link in the description below. I've never used this stuff before. Well, I've used this stuff before, but not in this big ass can. Oh yeah, high volume, <laughs> a lot of pressure. Must wear eye protection. Dang, this is violent. All right, old setup and new setup. I recreated it over here, nice and neat. We got the big black spring on top. We got the smaller spring on the bottom. We got our new pins, our new clips. And our pads, note the pointy side goes up top. This flat side down here goes on the bottom. Also, this set comes with this little bit of white lithium grease. What I do is I basically use all of it when I assemble this little adjuster because I'm in the Northeast and I get a ton of rust. Don't want this rusting up on me. I'll use regular brake grease to uh, coat everything else when it's on. But this part is important to get nice and lubed up before you thread it on. All right, I got my backing plate assembly pretty much as clean as it's going to be. I'm going to slide out these old pins. Don't need them. Got new ones. Go ahead and slide the new ones in. They go right from the inside out. I'll get rid of my yuck bucket too. I've gotten rid of a lot of yuck buckets in my day. All right, pins are in. All right, let's try this top one first. Let's see how we do up here. It's a little bit different than the XJ ZJ parking brake levers, but uh, I could figure this one out. I hope, right? Oh, here comes that happy dog again. <laughs> that dog is berserk. One, two, 
All right, here we go. We got our brake shoe in place on the bottom. Now we're gonna put in our spring. We'll just slide this along here. Tuck that in where it's supposed to be. Now I can dip our top shoe in, hook it on the spring. All right, we got our bottom shoe on. Now it's time to put our top shoe on, but we wanna get the spring attached. This could be kind of tricky sometimes, more like every time. <laughs> so I'm gonna put this on here. Let's see if I could work it into the bottom somehow over here. There we go. Bottom shoe on with its pin. Got the top shoe in place on the spring. Now we'll go ahead and get that top pin and clip on. There we go. Now we'll work on the bottom spring and the adjuster. Get that bottom spring in. There we go. All right, that is in. Now behind this adjustment star, there is a little plastic boot that you could pop out from the back. Right there. And this is what you could use to adjust the star with a screwdriver when the brakes are all together. Just like that. Want to make sure these ride nice and even around the hub. Don't want one side protruding further than the other. All right, yuck bucket back in place. We'll spray down these brake pads, these uh, parking brake shoes that were just touched and got all dirty and greasy. Now we're going to put on our first new rotor. I went with the Doorless Gold. These are coated and they're part number 5119DG. These were like 75 bucks as opposed to your regular untreated ones, which are like 60 bucks. The regular ones weren't in stock, so I upgraded myself. Now these are coated so they're not packed in all sorts of grease, but we're still going to go ahead and clean these up to make sure we have good braking surface. So pop these on backwards, hit the inside with some brake clean. There we go. Now we'll slide these on. There we go. Excellent. All right, we're going to clean up the surface of the brake caliper bracket where the pads are going to slide on. I want to make sure the surface is nice and clean and free of obstructions so our pads could slide nice and neat and these little grooves. Now, the front brakes have little clips that attach onto this part, and you could have the brakes slide on that. These, I don't think they have them. And of course, you can see the wear in the bracket. Hmm, I should probably weld this in. Oh well, we don't have time. All right, bracket's gonna go on the same way it came off with the two 18 millimeter fasteners. Mount right up, easy peasy. There we go, nice and tight. All right, old brake pad in. Now we're just gonna compress the caliper with the C-clamp. Nice and gentle. Apply nice, easy pressure. You could also go ahead and pop open the brake reservoir cap. Get rid of any resistance. But this is going on nice and easy. Nice and smooth. Beautiful. Nice. Old brake pads out. 
And here are the new brake pads. We got that AutoZone Duralast MKD791. There we go. Old one and new one. Just about identical without the groove. Go ahead and pop this on. Paint on some brake grease in the back of the caliper, right on that piston. Gonna go ahead and push these pins out a little bit. Now we can pop in the brake pad. Try not to get them too yucky. Lube up these brackets. Slide our other pad in. Now we can sandwich this guy all together. Go ahead and wiggle this guy till these pins line up. Oh yeah, and really important guys, you want to make sure you do not twist up your soft line. That will be bad, okay? We'll go ahead and put these little caps back on, top and bottom. That is great. And the last thing we're going to do is put this little clip back on. It just kind of pops into these holes and loops around the bottom. Pretty simple. Just like that. That gives some tension on the caliper. Holds everything together. Not too well, <laughs> but it works for the back. All right. Before we put the wheel back on, I'm just gonna hit this with some brake clean again. Get all my grubby fingerprints off. There we go. Get back there too. There we go. Nice. Let's get this wheel on, do the other side. Look at the wear on this rotor. You can see the pad has ground down to the steel right here. Definitely got some uneven brake wear. I wonder if the other caliper was seized up. That's why this one had all the stopping action going on here. Wore right down to the bare metal. <laughs> this is no good. This side, we don't have any axle seal leakage. This is uh, bone dry, just covered in <laughs> dust. I guess all this dust is what's left of what used to be the brake pad shoes and rust. Here we go. We're gonna pull on this e-brake lever. Oh, look at that. It's getting tight already. Now this is a, should be a self-tensioning e-brake system. Just give it a couple cranks. And uh, yeah, the uh, e-brake should figure itself out. 
Uh, if not, we could always get in there, pop off that little cap on the dust shield, and flick that little star till the e-brake tightens up, till we get those e-brake shoes rubbing on the rotor. We are parked on the hill of my driveway. Pull that e-brake. All right, let's see if this baby worked. And we're rolling a little bit. Mah. How about now? Ah, still rolling. <laughs> All right, we'll get in there and we'll turn the little adjusters. All right. So a couple more cranks. Pull this thing all the way up. There we go. All right, let's pop this baby in neutral. I am on the hill of my driveway. Let's see if this rolls. All right. It does not roll. Foot is off the brake. We did it. We got ourselves a nice parking brake. Just so you know, I'm not messing. There we go. We are rolling. All right, drive. Let's continue on with this test drive. All right, here's a good first test of how well you did your brakes. Does it brake straight? Yes, it does. Not pulling to the right or the left. Nice, even braking. Very cool. All right, guys, I am just gingerly driving around the neighborhood to uh, break in these pads. Now, these aren't ceramic pads or performance pads where you would need a proper break-in procedure. I'm just going for a cruise and uh, enjoying my nice new brakes. Uh, I got a nice firm brake pedal and I like it, so it's pretty good. I'm gonna drive around like this for a little bit. I'm happy I have an emergency brake now, a, a parking brake. This could actually pass inspection now if it wanted. Well, I still got EVAP issues, but that's another day. Uh, so yeah, um, future videos, um, I'm gonna do that EVAP canister. Um, I got the trailer hitch to go on. Um, of course, I gotta do an axle seal video now because that is just uh, dripping really bad off the driver's side. And uh, I'm just happy I have new brakes. Now, <laughs> look at this, guys. This park brake, this uh, emergency brake was so badly corroded, it had no brake pads whatsoever. I'm wondering if that's the original brake pad. So, a previous owner, you, your lack of maintenance, you make me sad. You make me sad. But, then again, if it wasn't for your lack of maintenance, <laughs> I wouldn't have got this great Jeep at such a low price. So thank you, previous owners. Uh, didn't destroy it, too bad. Everything's fixable, except for rot. So, that's it, guys. Thank you for watching my brake video. Um, that's it. Remember to like, subscribe, and I will see you on the next project. Peace.